here. Can you feel that? In here. <laughs> The pain is starting to come back. Yeah, I feel that for sure. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Look how much farther. So good. Is it painful right here? It didn't hurt, it just sounds so scary. <laughs> My entire thoracic spine is just feeling like a knot. Yeah. <laughs> Left leg is short. You're off there. It just feels like is my neck still attached? Unlock your full potential at Crack Addicts. What did you first come in for and what happened after your first adjustment? So I've been having issues with my sternum primarily and it's been kind of sandwiching into the back. Yeah. And so my entire thoracic spine is just feeling like a knot. Uh, that was the main thing. And then Kind of just came in, wanted to see what was going on, kind of got pushed in by one of, <laughs> <laughs> by another client of his, and then found out that I had a lot more wrong with me than I really thought that I did. And then um, first session, everything felt not amazing at first, whatever, everything was getting dug into. Afterwards, you know, the main pain that I was having went away. Um, nothing super crazy. And then know. it's starting to come back though, right? Yes. Which is the important part. And yes. I wanted you to say that too, truthfully yeah. and everything how it is also. And you told me that you had a headache as mm -hmm. well, right? Yeah, I did. Yeah. So the pain didn't start coming back until I saw you on Monday. So that was like what, two days ago. Yeah. Yeah. I thought two days ago it started coming back. Um, about this morning, late last night, headaches started maybe an hour after the session and stuck for about two, three days. Now it's finally gone, but the pain is starting to come back. Yeah. So. And I wanted her to say that because this is important. Healing takes time and also the first signs of healing sometimes are a little bit uncomfortable. Yeah. There's a saying in health, we have to feel more and able to heal more. So this is a perfect example of that. We blend a lot of techniques. There's so many techniques out there. Chiropractic is a neurologic phenomenon. So as long as we are doing an adjustment, changing your posture, your alignment as you walk out of here, that's where the healing takes place. Yeah. It's not so much about the pop. And let's go over a few things. So I want to start off with a little bit of analysis. We're looking at your rib cage. Some things that are important are worth mentioning. What do you do for activity? You like to do something a little bit aggressive for yeah. fun. What is it? Uh, well, <laughs> <Not> I, <happening. laughs> I uh, practice Muay Thai and Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. I'm not amazing. I'm learning. Um, so I'll start somewhere. Yeah. I'm learning. Yeah. So uh, I get hit a lot. I get thrown a lot. I yeah. do a lot of hitting myself. And then I also do a bunch of heavy weight training as well. And working with my clients, I'm pretty much moving all day long. Did And I remember if you've taken a rest period of at least two days mm -hmm. recently. And if so, how did you feel? So I felt awful. <clears throat> I took about two days off, and then that was whenever my sternum was terrible. Just terrible, terrible. And the reason I asked you, and the reason I bring it up, and we'll get going here with the adjustment, is because when we rest, we feel more of the true state of where our health is. Movement overrides pain neurologically. Mm -hmm. So as we're moving constantly, you're working out seven days a week and always moving, yeah. <laughs> it's not necessarily a bad thing, but when you start to notice there's something wrong from a couple days of rest, that is a bad thing, right? And that's not normal and we're seeing the healing taking place. So let's go ahead and show some things that we're doing here. I wanna look at your neck motion first. So okay. we'll have you look down chin to chest, please. Good, and then up all the way as high as you can. Good, so stuck there is what I'm looking at, and extension is what we call that when you're looking up. And you also sprained your left AC joint recently, mm -hmm. yeah? Yeah, about three months ago, maybe okay. four. And is it painful right here? It's not painful, but there was a knot that I've never had before, so now I've just got like a, a pretty little bump on my shoulder. Yeah, and what that is, is the body will, it's called remodeling or Wolf's Law, when there's any injury, there's mm -hmm. like a bony deposit there just for support yeah. or just to protect it. So that's yeah. all that's there. It's not a problem, it probably won't go away at this point, mm -hmm. but can we get it more functional and moving better and feeling better? Let's hope so. Yes, <laughs> yes, and that's what we want. Okay. Let's have you side bend your uh, ear to shoulder, left side first, please. Okay. 
Okay, good. Now to the other side. Okay, so I'm looking at motion. Motion's really important when it comes to um, the health of the spine. And then let's have you uh, turn your head left as far as you can. Now let's have you turn your head right as far as you can. Okay, good. And then noticing that left and right motion now, I'm going to compress your rib cage from this side. I'm going to have you do that again, and we're going to see if this affects your motion, okay? Yeah. Go ahead, look left again, and then right. Does that change it at all? Any easier? I, I feel a little bit easier going to the left yeah, on that side. Looks better too. So when we're in, have you been in car accidents ever? Nothing noticeable, like a tiny little fender bender. How fast? 20 miles per hour. Maybe? 20, so that's significant. That counts. Yeah. And you're you played sports the writer, you're an yeah. athlete, and we like to down. I say we because me too. We like to downplay things or yeah. say, oh, I'm not that hurt or doesn't hurt that bad. But that's something, and all the things add up. And then with a sprain on the shoulder too, it's distorted the rib cage. When the rib cage becomes distorted, it affects motion of our upper extremity and yeah. lower extremity. So we have some rib stuff and that's where you're feeling it even in the front here. Mm -hmm. But with this test showing up, showing also there's some dysfunction on the sides of the rib cage as well. It's not just in the front. Yeah. And we adjusted them last time too, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I'm gonna feel your spine for motion. So we look at it globally and now I'm feeling more, we call segmentally, which is like the game Clue, who done it? We gotta find who the problem is, because it's not everything. And you're very mobile globally, right? You have mm -hmm. really good mobility, yeah. but there's a few joints in your spine that we identified that are not moving. Yeah. Yeah, so those are the ones that are problematic and that's what we need to free up. And you even in some joints had some hyper mobility or too much movement. Yeah, I'm, I'm all types of whacked up. <laughs> yeah. So those are the ones though, that we want to stay away from. Because yeah. if I just went and cracked everything, we would make the ones worse that yeah. are that didn't need it. So I'm checking your hip height here, and you're off there. You're off on the neck as well. But you're more centered than you were looking at your head positioning. Yeah. yeah, a lot more center. But that first time I saw her, there was a huge translation and head tilt. So just to see what the change to the upper neck, one bone and just through a light contact hold, brings it back. I think she's probably barely off, but she's off. Let's have you lie on your back face up, please. I'm gonna check the leg length from this position. She's just telling me more about the neck. That is close, but she's off. Same as before, the left leg is short. It's barely, but you're off. Let's have you seated, please, facing that way. And I'm gonna make an adjustment to that same spot that we were on before, okay? That top bone. And the reason I'm doing things gentle and light, partially, to show there's multiple ways to do something, but also partially because her body's been through a lot of trauma. And I like to match that with a light force, at least initially. There's no point in forcing. side of your neck. Mm -hmm. Describe why. I see this lot. I can feel it's it already, too. <laughs> it's already like I feel something like going up in my jaw kind of. Yeah. And oh yeah there was something also weird that I've never experienced before. What was Whenever it? Um, I was having my headache after about maybe two days my ears started to feel stuffy. Hmm. So the, you I didn't know what that was. Where <laughs> the nerves go that we just yeah. affected. Yeah. Everywhere but more specifically, so there's a very global effect that happens from the nerves at the very top of the neck, eyes, ears, nose, and throat. So your atlas is in. Let's have you lie on your back face up, and I'm going to check the leg length here. There we go. Now we're solid. And 
Her left leg was about a quarter inch short. Now it's even, so that's good. And then we're gonna look at rib cage here. I'm gonna have you seated one more time facing that way, please. And I'm gonna check also the pelvis. So I'm looking for hip height. And now we're even. <laughs> close my eyes to yeah. six <laughs> And other than that bump there on the shoulder, mm -hmm. looking pretty good. Uh, so with the rib cage here, I'm gonna get an activator. This is just an instrument. I was trying to explain this to you before with some of the light force stuff. It seems really confusing because we are not forcefully moving anything back into place. What we're doing is if you could picture almost like a cell phone tower and every joint in your body that has communication with the brain, that's what we're changing. Mm -hmm. When we get it to communicate properly, we'll change that alignment and then everything surrounding it, the muscles start to relax, which you've noticed, yeah. and the nerves that go to everything else, like our organs, start to work better. So let's do this. And any motion with that shoulder that you've felt that hurts so far? Um. Honestly, the only thing that sometimes bothers it is if I go overhead and I'll, if I go to like stretch my lad or something. Can we have you try to provoke it right now? Just, can you feel that? Yeah. Discomfort? Okay. Yeah. So let's have, bring it down. I'm going to hold her collarbone down. Now try the same thing. Any better or different? It's not as intense. Okay. Good. So it improves the pain level, yeah? Mm. And then I'm going to hold the clavicle on the other end. Go ahead and do the same thing. A lot better. A lot better, yeah. So the two things, those are two shoulder joints, and then I'm gonna do one more even. Go ahead and do the same thing, overhead. Okay. Yeah, that one's almost gone on Al that one. Almost gone, yeah, okay. So there's three joints in the shoulder that are showing up, truly four, because the shoulder has four joints. The last one's the rib cage. So I'm gonna be on all of them, and we're gonna make a few adjustments, and we're gonna have you redo that same motion and that should feel a lot better. So that's called the SC joint or sternoclavicular. This is the AC joint. And then glenohumeral joint right there. And that one might be a little sensitive. Okay, go ahead overhead for me please. It's a lot better. All right. <laughs> it feels kind of shaky because it's like it's not used to going that full range of motion, but that's really it. <laughs> so the motion's already better too, which is yeah. awesome because we've it's been so light. Yeah. We barely did anything. <laughs> but chiropractic's a neurologic phenomenon. How cool. We don't need to go crack everything. Not that we can't or we shouldn't, but there's just more to it. And this is a fun way to experience it, there being more to it. So I'm going to give that same compressive effect to the rib cage that I was doing with my hands. And that's what I'm doing here. So the angle I'm taking with the ribs is bringing around to the front. Some of these might be a little tender. Good, and then I'll have you cross the left arm over your shoulder for me, please. This way? Yeah. Yeah, and these are where a lot of it is. Yeah, I'm not excited about the other side. <laughs> mm -mm. And were, were you sore after your first adjustment? A little bit. It was mainly in my neck where I was experiencing most of it. Yeah. And, and that soreness yeah. is a few reasons, but like tissue healing. Yeah. There's been a lot of trauma there, and as we change the blood supply to the area, mm -hmm. and as this tissues and muscles, tendons, ligaments start to heal where mm -hmm. they should be, might be a little bit uncomfortable. So right here on the sternum, and this is rib cage also. So rib cage is not just the back of the ribs, but on the front. And then I'm gonna be Right here, this is where the cartilage of the rib meets with the bone of the rib. So there's more, there's a lot to the rib cage. Okay, good. Now, let's have you turn your head left and right. That should feel easier and better. A lot better that way. Yeah. 
And that was the way that was restricted was the left one before, so easier mm -hmm. to feel there. And then uh, left hand overhead again for me, please, and see if that feels good. <laughs> yeah, it's a lot better. It's quicker. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's cool. I love it. And then let's also have you look up, please, because I want to see that motion. Look how much farther we can get on this. Does that feel easier to look up? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's so much less restriction in your spine. So we adjusted one bone in your spine and then your rib cage and shoulder. And that is exactly where we're going to leave it. This is going to take some time to heal, but it's so cool to see it already taking place. Hey, I'm Dr. Matt from Live Spring Chiropractic in Austin, Texas. We are here today with Meg and she is going to explain a little bit about what she's feeling or what brought her in. So I have a ton of pain in my right shoulder and in my neck I have an old whiplash injury and I've been trying to lift more recently and I feel like it's starting to really hold me back and I'm not really getting any results with massage or any other methods that I've tried to do on my own. So. I have to say that your massage therapist said to you and you. He said right that told me. my neck was a real mess. <laughs> and when to come back when you have more time because yeah. you need to spend more time on your neck. Yeah. Uh, the reason I said that, so the common thing that we hear is like just dig into the muscle, dig into the muscle, dig into the muscle. But when we understand that the muscle is really tight because there's a problem in the neck in one of the joints, that's what we need to correct. So a chronically tight muscle or knot that you're feeling is usually not just a muscle problem, it's a joint problem. So, we're gonna show today some analysis, uh, what we're looking at on your spine, and then we'll make some corrections. Sound it's good? my mess net. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, let's start your face down, please. Okay, I'm gonna start down here with the leg length. And I don't think I just mentioned this to you, but I am now, right leg is shorter than the left. Cool, tell everyone about it. No, yeah. Hey, not for long. How about that, okay? <laughs> and then it gets longer there. So reason, because, Meg, your hip bones are misaligned. You know how I just showed you on the spine? I'm gonna show people on the camera also, and it's the right side, the right one here, so that's where we're gonna make a correction. Is there any tenderness when I'm pushing in there? Mm -mm. No, none, okay. So there's not always that tenderness, but let's look at this. She likes to work out. She was talking about uh, maybe some muscle weakness or lack of engagement. So let's check it. The nerves from down here controlling the glutes. So let's have the left one first. Hold it out here for me. Don't let me push it in. Good there. And then on the right one, hold here. Nothing there. And if you noticed, Let's do it one more time. We'll get the camera right there. So hold out here. Yeah, the whole hip comes up when we do that. The whole hip is coming up because she's protecting that joint. The muscles surrounding the joint are really tight too. So I don't know if you've noticed, Meg, more tightness maybe on the right side or if you've even noticed that lack of engagement in the glute. I noticed it when you pointed it out. <laughs> Well, there, if you're gonna say so. And then here in the mid back. So it's where we come to again a tight band of muscles that go up the spine called the paraspinal muscles, meaning along the spine. What a clever name. And then right there specifically, that's the specific joint, which you told me before that you don't feel, but then as soon as they come out here, right there. Yeah. You feel that? That's the same bone, it's just a different spot on it that I'm pushing that she's feeling it. And then coming up into the neck, neck actually controls the shoulder neurologically. So, so many times when people will say they have shoulder pain, it's really a problem in the neck. And here, that's what your massage therapist is feeling. Yeah, <laughs> yes. yes. <laughs> and there's a knot, right? There's a nodule, not for long though. Okay, this right side here is moved out of position back and down. We're gonna correct that one first. So all the muscles surrounding it up here that run along the spine are tight. They're trying to bring it back into alignment and to protect that joint. In the mid upper back, it's the fourth bone down in the upper back. Shift it off to the right. So when I pushed right on the bone directly, nothing. You didn't feel anything. But as soon as they come out onto the same bone on that left side where the muscles are pulling tight, yeah, you felt it. So we're gonna be there, and then that fifth bone down in the neck, there is shifted off to the side. So the whole right side, again, is pulling tight, trying to bring it back. Those three spots, what we're gonna correct. 
Sound good? Great. And we'll give you the redemption. We're we'll, gonna test the glue after the correction. <laughs> and look at your leg length, okay? Awesome. So face down, please. And now she has been to a chiropractor before. She's been to a good chiropractor too. I know the chiropractor. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I always still like to explain what I'm doing and it might be a little bit different. Have you had a drop table so it's gonna come pop up from underneath your hips? Like that? Oh, no. Okay, so I'm gonna do it a little different. So right there. Can you make a fake noise for me? I'm just kidding. <laughs> so I'm gonna... Then one more. Good. Voila! Magic! Not really. Meg, it's mechanics. When we change your mechanics. And then we're gonna recheck, we're gonna give you that redemption now. Hold this out here, good job. Same as it was, hold this out here. Now you can hold it, but you still don't like it. Your hip is still driving up. There's something else. That wasn't the only thing. That right there. Yeah, I feel that for sure. And that's the major one, that's the fifth lumbar. So I always start down low in the pelvis. If it doesn't clear out, this is a good example of it. Neurologically, we still have something there. So it's telling me there's gonna be one up. And immediately you feel that one, huh? Mm -hmm. Actually, I'm gonna do this one a little different by hand. So let's have you turn on your side facing me, please, like you're sleeping. You probably had this done. And then we're gonna bend the top leg and straighten the bottom. And all the noise people will love this one. Oh, good. <laughs> Are you okay with that? Yeah, I'm fine with that. <laughs> so we're going to be right there. Probably a little tender in the mind. I'm going to roll your whole body toward me and try to soften your whole body. I will not drop you. <laughs> a little push at the end here. Good. <laughs> and then. It feels so scary. <laughs> <laughs> Does it hurt at all, though? No, it didn't hurt at all. Yeah. Just lots of pops. Yes, uh, face down for me, please. And it's really only one joint that's making the noise. Sometimes people will say, it felt like everything in my spine moved. <laughs> Just because there's so much compression in that joint though. So good, still even there. Yeah, less tender. Yeah. yeah. And then let's recheck here. So hold out here. Yes, ma'am. Now we're way stronger, I like it. Yeah, good there. That's a common thing with squatting too that we'll see actually is more tenderness down here. Have you noticed with squatting a little bit of like pinching almost? Yeah, I don't get like a ton of depth because I feel like I don't want to lose the form and yeah. I start to lose it when I get pretty low. Yeah, so when we have a mechanical problem, we'll start to exactly shift our form for the worse. This one here. So for that, let's have you take a big breath in for me, please. I'm gonna follow all the way down and a little push at the end. Let it all out. Good. Good. And then last one, we're gonna be here in the neck. Let's have you on your back, please. This one, just bring the neck off to the side and then just a slight push here. Oh, it didn't hurt, it just sounds so scary. <laughs> I noticed her first words. I'm sorry. It didn't hurt. It didn't hurt at yeah. all. It just feels like, is my neck still attached to my head? Okay, we're you, good. You know why we think that? It's action movies. Oh, I'm sure, because you're just like, you come up behind someone. Yeah. yeah, we're gonna check. I wanna check one thing on the shoulder here in the front. So let's have, I'm gonna do a muscle test. Okay. Yeah, so arms up there, and then this is the one that's no good. Let's actually have this one up too. I'm gonna to check this one first. So I'm gonna push straight down toward your foot, don't let me. Okay, good, and then same thing here, hold. Good, so strong there. I wanna test the rest. You can lower that one. Uh, hand up, palm out toward me, hold. I'm gonna push it straight out, don't let me. Good, I'm gonna push it up and out, diagonally, don't let me. Good, make a fist for me. I'm gonna push it straight down, don't let me. Good, bend the elbow. I'm gonna push it under the table, don't let me. Good, 
Her shoulder is fine. Your shoulder is fine. <laughs> the joints of it, we just checked all of them. They all show up strong. The primary problem with you feeling it in your shoulder was actually the neck. Her trainer has been telling her the problem's not always where you feel it. I agree with her trainer. She's got a good trainer. <laughs> She's got a good teacher. I wonder who it is. So let's check. We can check the knees also. You mentioned previous injuries and surgeries. Yeah, I've had three knee surgeries. Three knee surgeries on each? No, two on the right and one on the left. Okay, two on the right, one on the left. And a meniscus, what what was going on with the meniscus? Meniscal two. disorder on both sides. And I tried to just rehab it myself, which ended up making it, yeah, it <laughs> formed a cyst on the outside of my knee. So instead of a really easy arthroscopic procedure, they oh. had to like cut down the side of my knee. But let's check it out with all that being said and right. see what we can do. I'll be slide up just a little bit toward your head, please. Perfect. And then go ahead and lie back. You might just lie down. Oh, there we go. Okay, so with the knee, I'm just going to feel it for position-wise first. And do you remember, was it the outside of the knee or the inside of the knee? Where, which? The meniscus. The lateral or the medial meniscus? Medial for the first two. And I I think it was, well the cyst was on the outside, but I don't know if that's, I assume that's where the tear is because the liquid, like the fluid came out of the tear. Yeah, and is it this right one that's been bothering you too? Yeah, that's the one that bothered me this morning. And it's, I'm guessing it's on the outside too. Outside bottom. Yeah, yeah. so right there, because and the reason I'm saying that is because of the motion, I'm feeling what we call the tibia, which makes up the shin. We call it the shin bone, that's our slang for it. And when I glide it this way, it's fine, it's mobile. But then on this side, there's nothing there. And that might be where it's tender. Yeah, ow. <laughs> so, yeah, so my theme has been with you, the first thing that happens, you're going to hear my voice in your head. I'm sorry. <laughs> but it's good information, at least. So first thing that happens with any misalignment, whether it's in the spine or one of the extremities, such as the knee, is a loss of motion within the joint. So people out there, when you notice a loss of motion or tight muscles surrounding a joint, that's a sign. Get it checked. So this is no different. The muscles are tight and there's a loss of motion. I'm going to grab the tool. I'm going to make a correction on the knee. Have you seen one of these before in your other chiropractor's office? Okay. You know how we use a drop table for the first correction on the low back? It's the same thing, but it's a little handy one for the extremities. Okay. We'll do the same thing on the knee. I'm going to make a slight correction on it. You're almost going to feel like we're doing nothing. Okay. But we're doing something. Sweet. Do away. So just a little bit of rotation, is that okay? Yeah. Okay. Probably feels like nothing, feels right? Like nothing, yeah. yeah. That's what people always say. I'm gonna make a different noise for this one. <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna stamp we're gonna, I was gonna say you beat me to it. We're gonna time stamp it. Wait, one more. Okay. I'm done. Let's check it now. Ha ha ha. Different feels different to me. Yeah, it feels there's still like some tenderness to it, but like is, on that outside. Is it less tender or less painful than it was? Yeah, it's less right painful there. as opposed to like less tender, I guess. Okay. Now I'm coming in to feel the other parts of the knee. So there's the patella, and that's probably where you had had. Yeah, that is like the big problem spot for my surgery. Yeah. So just some scar tissue. And when I feel the kneecap there, that's very mobile. That's not as mobile. It still moves down, but not as well as that one. This is a weird one. This is the bunker shot of an adjustment. If there's any golfers out there, we're swinging into the sand on this one. We're not going to hit it directly. If you're not a golfer, I'm sorry. So just a tiny bit here. That's it. A little more. There, now it's moving. <laughs> that's funny, I felt that down on my calf. There we go. It's all connected. And that is one of the things that's actually going to attach Yeah, to the back the of my calf, exactly yeah. where you touched it, yeah. where I felt it. And then I'm feeling her IT band and the lateral part of, or the outside part, sorry for my fancy words, yeah, of the quad. And that doesn't feel good, does it? This is the vastus lateralis, it's the quad muscle on the outside where it attaches into the IT band. With knee problems, this is a common muscle that we'll see really tight. Just running along it, side to side. Some cross friction massage. Doesn't feel good during, no. <laughs> but after will be much better. I hate to say it is always better after, but it yeah. is. 
<laughs> so good. good I'm glad I don't have any secrets. Yeah. I would give them up immediately. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> okay. Cool. Let's have you stand on the knee and feel how it feels. Should feel more stable, like a ledge that was off center that's now centered almost. And even as you step with it, does it feel different? Yeah. When you move it. It feels like less tight. Yeah. Good. And it's interesting, almost like down here in the bottom of my foot, like I feel like, like it's through my foot. Yeah. So that's the next thing that we're gonna check quickly is the foot. Let's have you on your back. Okay. So any knee problem, we're always going to affect, or when we have a knee issue, somebody has a knee issue, we always check the pelvis and then the feet also. Above or below always gets affected. Mm -hmm. Sometimes both, many times both. So we're going to check them here. So speaking of my foot, yeah. this might be completely unrelated, but I often find that I'm standing with my foot like curled under. Does that make any yeah, sense Yeah, you probably at hurt all? your foot at some point, and you're doing the same protocol you did with your knee, your self-rehab. <laughs> <laughs> right. I just stand on it like this. I just yeah, well. sit, I was like, what am I doing? I'm standing on the side of my foot. <laughs> have you ever had your feet adjusted? No. Okay, fun. We're going to have some fun. So the arch here especially, you feel that? Yeah. That's probably why you're staying off of that. Yeah. Because that hurts, doesn't it? Your face says yeah, you hate me right now. Yeah, it doesn't feel good. Yeah, that's okay. You'll hate me now, but you'll like me a lot more after. So here, so I'm feeling there's 26 bones and 33 joints in the foot. I'm feeling this one that glides back and forth. That's called the talus. That's moving until we get to the very end right there, and then it's limited mobility, so when you squat, this motion needs to happen, so if you feel like your squat depth is off, this is gonna be one of the reasons why. So let's change that, a little pull toward me. Good. There, now the motion's back, so you'll get that depth better when you squat, and then on the outside of the foot here, called the cuboid. Painful, huh? Yeah. yeah. She doesn't like it. So you definitely have some major problems in the foot, not for long. We're gonna make a correction right there, down. There. Right there still. Oh. Yeah. I'm Again, I'm forward. glad I don't have any secrets. So that's light pressure. So I'm gonna use this because it is so tender to touch. And we can do it by hand. I wanna get more movement on it. But if I do it with a more gentle way, you'll hate me less. That matters to me. Some people it doesn't. The YouTubers are probably like, no, make her suffer. We <laughs> want to watch her suffer. Sorry, people. I have a heart. Does that hurt? No. Yeah, this is a lightweight. It sounds loud. There. Yeah, that doesn't hurt anymore. <laughs> At you all. just wanted to scream and kill me. Yeah, that's nuts. Now it doesn't hurt. <laughs> I can't believe it doesn't hurt anymore. <laughs> and then as we move into the arch here, mm -hmm. that's also, you looked like you wanted to scream and kill me. We're gonna move this. So, slight push here. This one doesn't feel the greatest. Probably a little tender there. It's Yeah, it's a little tender. It's not as tender as the other side was. Okay. Yeah, yeah, that, that one doesn't, doesn't feel like great. Yeah, I know, I warned you though. There, now your arch is back though. And then, feeling the metatarsal heads right there. It's the second one. Pressure? A little bit. Yeah. More there. there it is. With those, sometimes that noise is really soft or there'll be none at all, but there, that pressure should be less. Yeah. Yeah, it's gone. <laughs> and then the first one, same thing on the top. Ah, uh, yeah, I feel that for sure. Yeah. That feels like you're gonna karate chop through my I'm foot. I'm going to. Oh, please don't. No. <laughs> so a little bit here also. Yeah, we're gonna use this, because again, she doesn't like me right now. That okay? Yeah. Okay. That's the karate chop. That's all. <laughs> That's the first metatarsal head that should glide up and down. Sometimes it'll get dropped down. Commonly, if we get our foot stepped on, this is the opposite. It's come up. So driving it down into the position it needs to be in. There. Less sore? Less sore. Okay. I'm happy. <laughs> These come up. There. There. 
She just doesn't like popping. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. And then let's feel this one. Much less going on in this foot, but yeah. still a little bit here. Good. And then one there. And then the middle cuneiform for the nerds out there, right there in the foot. Good. This foot, a lot less happening. Okay, walk on them. See how your new feet feel. <laughs> yeah, they feel good. Yeah. Although there's like, almost like right here, it feels like a slight pinch. Mm -hmm. So with moving things around at times and things feel different, you're moving on your foot in a different way than you have. So I'm not surprised that it feels different as you walk or almost like a pinch. Yeah. And that will go away mm -hmm. with more see. motion. It's like this guy here. Yeah. So, so we didn't even touch that spot on her foot that she's feeling. She's pointing to the third or the fourth looks like, even the fifth metatarsal head, which I was not on at all. It was the first and the second on that foot. Um, but now you're probably putting more weight on your foot in that area than you have. Than like hanging out right exactly, here. Exactly. Like yeah. <laughs> you're using your foot like a foot, which is a good thing. So as you start to move on it, it should feel better and better and more mobile. Awesome. All right. Awesome. Yay, thank, thank you. you. <laughs>